Has the truth community been majorly infiltrated by the elite? Is this secondary mainstream media circle narrative being pushed by three letter agencies and also members of occult societies? I'm M Seeker of Truth and uh, join me as we investigate. Hi guys and thank you for joining me. Um, so this broadcast is a bit off the cuff. Now I want to cover quite a lot of things in a short space of time. We will look at um, some notable people in the truth movement right now. Uh, very popular people. Um, so we'll be looking at the likes of Charlie Ward, uh, Simon Parks, Sasha Stone, Robert David Steele, 107. Um, but in order to keep this video succinct, we will be kind of maybe brushing over some stuff, but trying to get across the, the point or the idea that I'm talking about, trying to investigate. Showing, of course, as always, uh, evidence for, for what I say. I want to give a shout out to totaldisclosure.net. I'll leave the link in the description. And yeah, let's get into it. So I have been saying for a while now that I don't trust these people. I've been in, you know, the I've been researching for nearly two decades now. And many people that have been researching as long or longer than I have um they're able to see things through a different scope so a few years ago you know we have you know going back to 2018 or before we have we have you know the q drops coming out many people waking up and suddenly lots of um truth or personalities come out of the woodwork especially over the last two years um suddenly all, you know all the people that are really popular now have come out over the last couple of years these people there is a lot to say about their background. If you look into some of these major personalities, you know, you've got three letter agencies, you've got dodgy stuff, you've got, you know, private jets, moving money around for the elite. You've got major connections, right? As always, with any media outlet, whether it be uh, mainstream media and whether it be in, you know, the... Um, conspiracy world or you know the secondary um outlet of, of of media you know those on social platforms you know with the rise of social media and and youtube and things like that and now more recently sort of bit shoot rumble all of these other platforms where you you can't get censored you, you can on youtube but you know or, or, so there's so many um platforms out there and um you know where you get censored and you can't speak the truth, another platform will pop up. That's a big problem for those who are hiding in the shadows or hiding in plain sight, um, because the truth's coming out. The truth's coming out. And so the, the problem that I think that we've got is there's posers in this community. Because obviously with anything, you know, intelligence communities have a plan. And when all of a sudden they can't keep a lid on the jar of the truth, they will suddenly have to then spurt so much disinformation that you don't either you either don't know what the truth is anymore, or you believe what they want you to believe, or they steer you down a path because the damage control, right? You already know this much. So let's steer it down that path. So think about that, guys um there there is m many people and i think now the majority of the truth and network the majority is either controlled opposition or is feeding from those who are controlled opposition and perhaps they believe you know perhaps perhaps some of these these uh, influencers fully believe and 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 you know many can be fooled you know many have been fooled um so you know i never claim to know the whole truth i'm just you know think i'm pretty good at calling bullshit where i see it um and you know i want to investigate you know i'm just like all you guys out there trying to find the truth and you know some people have directed wow you must be you know on the bad side you know why are you attacking these people i'm not there's just so many people out there trying to deceive you. And all these people seem to be taking money in some form or another, right? And I'm going, hang on a minute, guys. You know, and I did this, you know, I started with, the, anyone knows the, the backstory of my channel? You know, I started with the, the fake king, Greg Hallett. We'll go a bit more into him 
in a little bit. I don't want to talk about him much tonight. I've talked about him too much in many videos. But, you know, I started with that. A guy claiming to be my king and, and many others king, people throwing money at this guy, and he was full of it. I looked into his background. I spoke to his family. I looked into his ancestry. I debunked that, right? And I was like, guys, please stop giving him money. Please, guys, please stop being mentally invested because that is my, you know, my main driver is uh, is care for others' mental health and well-being. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get back into the story. So looking into that, you know, I knew that that was a psyop or a, a con or a scam, right, at, uh, at the least. And then I looked at the people around that, and that's got what, what we could talk about Charlie Ward. People have been saying recently, well, why are you hyper-focused on Charlie Ward? Because I can prove he's a scam artist, right? So, you know, like a dog with a bone, right? If I'm doing this for the reasons I've stated, and I find someone with loads of evidence out there that I can present, and all I need to do is put it out there in enough videos and with enough evidence for people to finally wake up, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to go, oh, everyone's going, oh, well, you should focus elsewhere. No. If I've got, you know, so if I've got enough on, on certain avenues that are affecting thousands, or if you believe Charlie Ward's doctored numbers on his website, millions. I mean, like 12 million, 13 million, I think it's up now. 13 million and 17. Yeah, that number is at the end of his, uh, when I last looked, <laughs> at the end of his um, to, uh, follow account on his uh, website, his own controlled website with a source code that um, has been input by the people running his website. Um, if you believe that number, um, no, I believe probably uh, tens of thousands, maybe even into the hundred thousands um, are actually realistically following him but yeah millions if you want to believe him right so i'm being affected by this so anyway enough of that intro about why i'm doing this and what people are possibly doing let's look at some of the people that are culprits in this so we'll start with charlie ward it only makes sense so he started um with you know he became popular off the the greg hallett situation anyone that's not aware of my work or who greg hallett was he was very popular about a year ago uh he was claiming to be the real king of england not only that the christ messiah uh the um the, holding the title of christ um that's a big claim but not only was he the king of england he was saying that he was the king of other territories too now i debunked that or well, not just me others as well we went in, we looked at his story, we spoke to his family, his friends, we looked, we found out about the cult that he was in. Um, we found out that this guy was a scam artist. And where is he now? He's disappeared because he's been rumbled, right? So Charlie Ward was promoting this guy. And obviously, when the 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 heat got too hot, um, he jumped ship. He, you know, he, he then came clean, said, like, I knew all along. I mean, that should have been a major red flag. Anyone following Charlie Ward. And it was for many. When when it was reported on that, uh, many went, you know what? If he lies about that, what else is he lying about? He was lying about that. He was saying things like, long, um, God bless um, King John the Third. God save King John the Third. King John the Third. You know, but for him to know that this story wasn't quite right and not report on that and enjoy the... The, the the views the followers coming in um believing this narrative which he knew wasn't quite right um wow i mean come on guys that that that's your first red flag but yeah promoted this fake king but when the, but eventually realized that he wasn't going to survive keeping on with that especially with people like myself hot on the tail of this situation um so let's look at you know we've looked at this i'm sorry for repeating for anyone that knows about all this background and, and, and knows but this for the, for the purpose of this video anyone just seeing uh or finding out about me or finding out more about charlie's past he moved money for the elite he moved money for uh politicians uh for um you know for people of a, you know high wealth high standing uh, you know he admits it you know, he moved money around for these guys that is not a job that you don't get if you're not on the inside that is dodgy as hell right so he he did that still does that and you know moved currency around the world for people in positions of power this is how he claims to know um through um sources that he met on private jets jetting around the world moving money um saying that he was you know had hookers and cocaine on the these are his own words uh, what he said um you know 
um, dodgy stuff with the elite. Um, and he admits it, right? Um, so he has his ties. However, where was he before that? He comes from the Plymouth Brethren. He was brought up in a religious cult. Who else was brought up in this religious cult? Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley. Britain's most prolific Satanist uh, comes from the uh, Plymouth Brethren. Now, I can't cast a shadow over the whole of Plymouth Brethren because Alistair Crowley and even Dr. Fraud uh, came from this, this, this cult. But, um, yeah, red flags. Um, so in these sort of cults and, 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 and people being connected, you, you know, there is an element of... Um, occultism like you know especially obviously alice crowley satanist satanist you know um people being connected brotherhood is the word brotherhood right so suddenly charlie with no experience so by the way he had said had been saying for a long time um after he left the cult after he left by his own will of the cult he wanted to get out of the cult we've recently found out um from his uh from his son in fact uh but not only that he's recently let it slip and i think on purpose in a very recent video that um he was kicked out of the cult because his son had already said it he was kicked out he didn't relieve a free will he was he was um he was sleeping with other you know he was a married man sleeping with other people um and you know he got kicked out he got kicked out he didn't leave by free will so he was in this cult, and I believe, and I'll go more into this, that there is um, cult-like aspects to the following of the team, right? So, yeah, and then he goes on, and he is a camera salesman. Now, this camera salesman happens to knock on the door of a prison and then get given the contract to run CV CCTV and security systems in, the, in all of the prisons in all of the UK. Connected brotherhood, uh, and, th and this is the sort of things that you know Freemasons and, and, and whatnot. You know, they have ties. They they do they scratch each other's backs, and and that's how they stay connected and stay in power and stay elite and stay, you know, the top of the tree, right? Connected brotherhood, right? Providing advice and systems for the security of prisons in three countries. I've been moving money around the world for a number of private clients. Wow, Charlie. Are people serious? This dude comes from the same cult as Alistair Crowley. Says Jesus loves you. Accepts the first guy that pops up and says, I am Christ the Messiah. Uh, with, with Greg Hallett, the real king of England. So, and then you've got his admissions of, you know, he used to know you know pop stars um top of the pops top of the pops uh, for for maybe americans or those too young to know was a uh, a show that showcased um pop bands or you know bands popular bands in uh, the 80s and 90s mainly uh, or i think it might have gone beyond the 80s maybe 70s but anyway um at one point jimmy savile hosted it around the time where where charlie says that he was uh, says what I'm about to say, but, um, you know, can't say it's Jimmy Savile, but he said that he used to take young girls on the set and he used to warn these girls, by the way, you know, the pop stars are going to want to shag you. They're going to want to shag you. They're like, oh, no, don't worry, Charlie, we'll come, we'll come, right? And, and uh, then he goes on to say these girls, you know, a lot of these girls were under, under um, young girls. A lot of the girls would say to me, Charlie, Charlie, get me on top of the pops. And I could take probably five or ten girls on a week. And I said, well, I'll take you on, but you'll end up having to shag the bloke that, I'm, if, you know, he'll probably want to shag. And they were like, no problem, no problem. We come, we come, you know. Because a lot of these girls were, under, were young girls, you know. Um, right. Uh, if you've not seen the video, go back and look at uh, my work. I'm pretty sure he's probably deleted that video from all platforms. But uh the proof and truth is there so there's that right um so and then you know recently the the video with sabrina who claims she's a child trafficking victim now um the le legitimacy of her story whether it's true or not um you know who knows but 
I've learned over time to not dismiss victims. Um, you know, I also think it's important um, to not dismiss the fact that they could not be being truthful because there's so many people out there that are getting falsely accused of stuff. Um, however, you know, you always have to take on board what they say. And for me reading her, I, I fully believe I fully believe that she was a victim. Whether her whole story is true, I'm not sure. But um, she says, when I when I saw you, I knew I recognised you. And then I, when I heard your voice, and that's important because he comes back and says after this video, oh, no, it wasn't me. Look, there's a video of me in the 80s. I had hair. Oh, God, have you had hair, mate? She recognised your voice. And if you watch that video, any of you watch that video, you can see, I can see, I can read that. I can read that she is sure. And then she feels embarrassed after he says, no, it wasn't me. And she's like, oh, I, I was, I was, no, okay, I'm sure. But um, when I very first saw you, Charlie, um, I swore I knew you. And then I heard you talk. And I can, I swear to you, I've met you before on a private plane um, going to one. I wish I had a map right here with me. Quite a few islands there, but I've never been to those ones. You've never been to those, okay? Because that's where no. I keep thinking. But anyway, um, like I could be wrong, but I swore. I swear. But anyway. Anyway, so many links into that. And now he is the main narrative of our truth for community. And now he, he is saying that um, he has been put in charge. Why? Why has he been in charge? He's been put in charge of this new, you know, quantum financial system. This reset that's going to happen, right? Ask yourselves why. Why would he, you know, this guy, ex, uh, you know, expatriate, moves to Spain, to Marbella, um, you know, a place where, uh, um, you know, not saying that this is why it's there i'm not saying that everyone that is there is but a place where many british criminals go uh and you know he admits it that while he was there he was moving around money and anyway so why would they trust him why would they put him in in charge because he's been online because he's got followers because he backed trump okay so they're gonna put him in charge of the new financial system um or you know even a spokesperson or you know whatever he's claiming it doesn't make sense this guy is not you know he's not right okay and, and many others aren't in this community this is the point so simon parks simon parks you know um before all of this recent stuff, you know, he was saying that he was being abducted regularly by aliens. Um, not only that, um, you know, Draco aliens, his mother was an alien. Um, and that then he was having sex with cat like aliens, fe feline like aliens. Right. Let's not forget. He has like, uh, was it 12 cats? Um, I think this guy maybe has had you know he admits he had a bad past um bad upbringing you know his parents uh whatnot and i think that maybe he's got some trauma-based disillusions uh and 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 maybe some psychology behind his story um i'm not saying it's not all true i, I fully believe that people have these sort of experiences um, but he says that he ha regularly has sex with cat aliens and has had a cat alien child um, called Zaka, um, whatnot. Okay, so anyway, this is what he was saying years ago. But recently, again, talking about coming out of the woodwork in the last couple of years, um, and for him, maybe only a year or so, he suddenly started saying, oh, yeah, well, I talked to people on the Trump team. And, you know, he's even, like Charlie Ward said, he talked to Q. Right. And now he's saying he's talking to, to the people in charge of the QFS system as well as uh, Charlie Ward. Um, but for him, his background, his parents, he says, you know, were part of three letter agencies. They were part of um, MI5. 
MI5, MI6, NSA links to all of that in um, in his recent in his bio before he changed it after someone did a video on him. You know, he talks about all of these free letter agency links from his parents. Simon's biological mother worked for the British security. This is Simon writing this. This is his own bio. Simon's biological mother worked for the British Security Service, often called MI5, between 1965 and 1979. That's not good. However, while she was managed by British intelligence, like they were her handlers, British intelligence were Simon Park's mom's handlers. She was, in fact, working jointly for the National Security Ag Agency of America. So she was an NSA insider. Her job was to type out documents that related to crashed UFO craft and had come down all over the Earth's, Earth's surface and had been retrieved by American Special Forces recovery teams. That's this Simon Parks right here. That's the origin of this Simon Parks. The Simon Parks is going viral as we speak on the Internet while everybody else is getting shut down. Every, everybody else who's out there actually speaking the truth is getting shut down. But wait, there's more. Simon's grandfather, who was a British diplomat, worked for the foreign arm of British intelligence, often called MI6. But again, in his case, he was closely associated with the Central Intelligence Agency. So you got MI5, MI6, you got uh, the NSA, and now the CIA, all in Simon Park's family. <laughs> There's no psychological operations going on here. Uh, during Simon's grandfather's time, he was awarded the Order of the British Empire OBE medal, as well as the Commander of the British Empire CBE medal. However, he turned down a knighthood from the Queen. He was offered, Simon's grandfather was offered a knighthood from the Queen that allegedly Simon says his grandfather turned down. Simon's grandfather was also a prominent Freemason. <laughs> it gets deeper, guys, and was British Britain's appointed diplomat to the United Nations in the late 1950s and early 19th. You might as well get it all out. He was a part of the Bilderberg Group, the Central Intelligence Agency, NSA. He's got MI5 and MI6 in his family, Freemasonry. However, at an event in 2013, it was a game changer when Simon was invited to the British Ministry of Defense to a joint small party being given a tour of a secret space radar base in the UK. So he has, he has secret access clearance that none of the rest of us have. This totally confounded the establishment media and has led to a far more serious appraisal of Simon's story by them. Okay, so now the establishment media is taking you serious? First of all, it should be it should be it's suspect that the establishment media was ever against this person because he has deep ties to the CIA and MI5 and MI6 and the NSA. But now he says he has secret clearance to get to places most of the rest of us can't get to. And now he has credibility in the eyes of the same establishment media. <clears throat> in my opinion, this guy couldn't make himself look any worse to the truth community. Um, it just is so fishy. You know, are these guys planted there? Are these guys just scamized? Are they making up these stories? Um, but, you know, Charlie's links to nefarious activities, working for the elite. Simon, um, you know, his his parents being part of three-letter agencies, them gelling together, them both apparently being, you know, figures in the QFS and talking to the QFS team, the quantum financial system team that affects everyone and this whole world and everyone on it you know and these guys these these social influencers have been put in put in charge of this how do people not see what's wrong in that so anyway um who you know who who links up with them let's talk about sasha stone he comes from an interesting background uh, let's let's read a little bit on that you know, so he changed his name. Actually, he's from a very noble family. His father was Sir Walter Adams. And he's described as a British historian and educationalist uh, with a vast resume. So uh, he was a lecturer in history at University College London, 1929 to 1930, Rockefeller Fellow in the United States. Uh, 1931, Organising Secretary of the Second International Congress of the History of Science and Technology, 33 to 38, Secretary of the Academic Assistance Council, 38 to 46, Secretary of the London School of Economics, uh, 42 to 44, Deputy 
deputy head of the British political warfare mission in the United States. 1945, assistant deputy director general of political intelligence department for the foreign office. 1946-55, Secretary of in, uh, Inter-University Council for Higher Education in the Colonies. 55-67, he was Principal of the College of uh, Rhodesia. 67-74, to 74, Director of the London School of Economics. Quite a vast resume there. But he was also appointed the Officer of Order of the British Empire. So he's got an OBE in 1945. Uh, you know, many more things. You know, this guy was connected. That was his father. So Sasha has, has managed to change his name. Let's look at who, who he hangs out, out with. So one of his very good friends and the manager of his band, uh, his failed band, was uh, Ciro Orsini. Now, who is uh, Ciro Orsini? Ciro Orsini was a uh, very well-connected uh, man. He's not only known as a restaurateur, but also a proud member of the Orsini Papal bloodline. Now, that is a um you know a mafioso you know noble family of italy since medieval times right this guy is well connected very good friends of him loads of pictures of him with him you know he manages his rock failed rock band he owns a pizza restaurant the orsini was one of the most influential italian noble families in medieval italy um, me members of the orsini family include five popes 18 saints 14 cardinals and a number of significant political and religious figures. Wow. Right. So this guy is the epitome of being connected and being in, in you know, his family, at least being involved in, in those sort of realms. You know, his family can be traced back to the Middle Ages, goes far back as the Roman period. So the bloodline is very long, and very strong. So he's obviously not shy about his connections to uh, his forefathers. Now you can begin to understand Sasha Stone and the ITNJ, the International Tribunal of Justice, right? And the role for Ciro Orsini and his family. You can see why it's very telling that ITNJ uses a cult-like symbolism found in the Vatican. Ciro Orsini and family all appear not only as former managers of uh, Sasha's failed rock band, but also part of the Mosaic Federation. Uh, the Federation receives a percentage of the ITNJ donations. That is dodgy. And so speaking of the ITN donations, you know, where is the proof of where any of that money went? So we'll speak a bit more about the ITNJ. Um, so in essence, money donated by people like you and me goes to Orsini and his criminal enterprise. So I'm not going to say too much more about Ciro, or, uh, Ciro Orsini. So I'm not going to say too much more about Ciro Orsini in this video. Uh, please go check out the link on totaldisclosure.net. But needless to say, there is um, some very dodgy stuff around rituals, um, secret societies, things that you need to look into. Uh, did I mention that Ciro uh, attended the Clinton Foundation fundraisers? Um, you know, in the company of Prince Albert, Prince Andrew, and none other than Jeffrey Epstein. So, yeah, I mean, human trafficking all over that. And you can catch pictures of uh, Ciro, Ciro Orsini with, you know, some famous people. Um, he's at the ITNJ inauguration. You know, you can catch him with uh, Tom Hanks, um, Bill Clinton, Boris Johnson. Um, this guy is, needless to say, very connected. And talking to the ITNJ, now here's a picture of Sasha Stone with greg hallett of all people the guy who was the fake king of england the guy that you know was either a psyop or a big scam uh, if it was a psyop it was a pathetic one because someone like me an average person could pull it apart so there's sasha stone with greg hallett um there for the uh, you know uh, the itnj and, and and who is in on that let's talk about robert david Steele. so robert david Steele is former former cia right so he his whole thing is that he was a part of a free letter agency come on guys hiding in plain sight these guys will tell you about their past and they'll brush it off you know he was cia right or, or still is and he was a fake i say a fake judge he was a fake judge in these ITNJ tribunals about human trafficking. You know, he is not a judge. 
and he's there uh, and there's this whole thing you know i saw the videos where they came out they look quite convincing oh wow there's a trial going on you know there's, there's a judge involved a real judge. i didn't know who he was at that time you know it's actually talking about human trafficking great great no it you know it's all it was all a show recently when he's been questioned on his past and you know kirsten w even had sent him 30 reasons why i don't trust charlie ward the video that i'd made and she got viciously attacked he i believe is a big part in running this team like he's almost like a manager of this 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 team of disinformation agents funded by the cia you know it, it, you know, it seems like he was uh, in damage control, trying to deflect anything. Now, now he's on a tour around, you know, America um, with this whole team. And I'm not think I'm not. I don't think that all of the the team are actually directly involved with the elites. Perhaps and maybe they are, um, but I think they're being controlled by them I indirectly. And I believe that uh, Robert David Steele is a manager. If Dr. Robert David Steele is the manager, who's the owner? Well, he tells you himself, you know, uh, the organiser of all this and perhaps the, the intel source, someone who hides his face. Um, and, you know, you, you usually only see the boots of him on his videos. 107 or 107 um, and claims to be a ex-spy again um connected intelligence um it's just so fishy no his real name wayne willett uh actually found out to be a pi a private investigator um this guy not only scamming everyone but uh perhaps perhaps some of this team um for a long time many of his followers believed him to be jfk jr he did not deny this. Uh, never did he correct anyone in any of the platforms that he was not. And um, recently, you know, he's not. He's Wayne Willett. Um, and, and recently that, that's kind of died out as, you know, it's not true. Um, and, and people around him now admit it's not true. Um, but why would you not correct that? You know, if people started, which they wouldn't, started saying that I was JFK Jr., you know, I mean, and I didn't, I wasn't showing my face, you know, I for sure, I don't have any bad intentions. And I'd be like, guys, that is not the truth. You know, seek the truth, critically analyze, use your discernment. For him to not do that, that should be your major red flag to start with. This guy is always hiding his face and, uh, so let's talk about Robert Davis Steele and 107. So let's have a look at these rings that they sport. So these rings that they sport, these rings, uh, red onyx rings or Freemason blood rings. You know, these these are a bad sign, right? These are worn by many notable people, especially celebrities, people like Tom Hanks, Oprah Winfrey, um, many people um you know many people in 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 high positions are wearing these many connected people this is a bad sign and you know 107 and uh both 107 and robert davis still sport these rings these blood rings robert davis still was questioned on, on what it was and he did answer at one point you know oh it's a college ring yeah it's to do with the uh you know university i went to or, or whatnot um yeah, that's normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how many, um, you know, how many people have a ring like that, you know, and then say that it come from some, you know, some college connection? It, it, it makes, that makes no sense. That's fishy as hell. Nothing to see here, people. Um, guys, you can tell me. Tell me in the comments. I'm sure but I probably have just invited a load of troll comments. Oh, I know loads of people that went to college and have this ring. Um, it's not true. Uh, that's not true. That, that's a sign of being in an occult, being a part of an occult society. Um, and not only that, I mean, just look into it yourselves, guys. I ain't got time to go into that. But, you know, what does that mean? Um, 
you know, if you want to have a surface look on Google, it will tell you, oh, Red Onyx Ring is about um, people in confusion and healing energies and, and whatnot. No, but it's not. Have a look yourselves about what, what, what that is. So, um, guys, like I said, I've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more I could have talked about, but, um, you know, this video could have been hours and hours and hours long. However, I will leave the link to totaldisclosure.net where you can find out a lot more about Sasha Stone, uh, Ciro Orsini, uh, and much more. Um, so do check that out and big up um, to that website. Um, yeah, like I say, I've... I, 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 I've started to dive in and then gone, you know what, we haven't got time. You know, it, there's just so much to cover here. And I know a lot of people have asked me to do videos on uh, Robert David Steele, Sasha Stone, uh, or even another one on Simon Parks. Um, I hope this has maybe fed a bit of that curiosity and answered some of those questions. Um, however, I will need to do a lot more work on releasing something more in depth. Um, but this gives you a surface overview of why I believe that um, this whole um, secondary mainstream media narrative is being run by the elites and controlled opposition. The very people you think that they are and that you are by following them uh, fighting against. Do not be sucked in. Um, I hope you've listened to this point. And, you know, guys, you know, I am here as one of you and I'm just showing you what is you can find out yourselves out there. This stuff, you know, I've given you receipts over the video, I've given you evidence, I've given you pictures, I've given you articles, I've given you, you know, go and find the truth yourself. Do your own research. I hate to say that because Charlie Ward says that he says that, but he does none of his own research and he does give no receipts and gives no evidence. He said, oh, do your own research. What you mean? You're full of bollocks and go out and find the truth yourself. Well, some of us did, Charlie. And um, what we came back with is that you're full of crap. <laughs> anyway, guys, I do believe that um, there is a major element of controlled opposition um, steering narratives. And just be careful out there. Um I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, hit that notification bell for my next one. And, yeah, thanks. Follow MC Crew Tree. Take care.